Today's scripture comes from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. Hear the words. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who believes, everyone who loves the parent, loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey God's commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey God's commands. And, and God's commands are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world. Yeah. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one by, who came by water and by blood, Jesus Christ. Not only with the water, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one to testify, for the Spirit is the truth. Yeah. May God add a blessing to this reading. You may be seated. Uh, do you need the video play? Yeah, yeah in a minute. I just want to make sure that you see it. You're probably sitting on one. Okay. This letter of John, 1 John, was written to believers who wanted to connect the dots of you. They wanted to connect to God. And they wanted to have a strengthened life in their faith. But just like us, sometimes they got off track. And sometimes they were misled. At the time, there was some confusion about what it meant to be people of faith. And the faith community was struggling to be a cohesive group of people. It doesn't sound so different in our world today, does it? I still believe that there is hope for a victorious life. I believe that there's hope for a victorious yes. church, for a victorious community of faith. There's also an issue, uh, there was also an issue with the way they treated others. In other words, they weren't being very neighborly. They weren't in this neighborly type of love. Again, not so different in today's world. Sad, but true. First John states that love is truth in action. Truth in action. In verses 3.18. And in, in the text in uh, 3.9 reads, Whosoever says that I am the light, well, while hating their brother or sister, is still in the darkness. And then 1 John goes on to say in 4, 7, and 8, Beloved, <coughs> let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. Man, those are some powerful words. Some strong words for us as people of faith. We're called to love one another. We're called to get on with the process of, of healing the, the wounds, healing our past, healing those things that would separate us from this incredible love. And it also says, if we don't love, we don't know God. Oh, man. If that is not a call to action, I don't know what is. If we don't love, then we don't really know God. Because God is love. Amen. I posted on one of the news, news channels, I'm one of their subscribers, and I like to just add my two cents worth in 
And when President Obama made his announcement yeah. to me, yeah. I, of course, posted, um, as a pastor, I would like us to see how President Obama systematically went through the process. Yeah. He, he, had a, he had an open mind, and he, was, he changed his mind. The only mind that I know that can be changed is an open one. Yeah. And so I posted this, and of course I got some really nasty responses, and was, I actually was called a hypocrite, um, because I was sharing God's love. And so be it. I don't take those personal attacks personal. I cast my cares on God. And the amazing thing is, is that God is love. Yes. Amen. God is love. And so, as we as individually, as individuals and as a community of faith, we ought to strive to live this victorious life that God promised so that we can take these words and apply them not up here, per se, but down here in our heart. That's where God looks in our heart, and that's where it really starts. We have to change our heart that's sometimes, right. amen? amen. Yes. Our, our mind and our attitude will come along if we can get it down in here. It will change our heart. We're called to let the Word of God abide in us. God is love. Amen. Now, who doesn't want love in your heart? Come on. That's right. Maybe I can illustrate this for you. It's like when you go, <coughs> when you're on a computer. Now, I would believe that probably 99.9% .9 of us in this room have computers or have access to computers. When you go to the computer and you might be on a site and it has this hyperlink. You know, and you, you, you click, you move your little mouse over it and it lights up or whatever it does <laughs> and if you click on that link um, then what happens is the computer takes you to the link that you clicked on right. now Pastor Sharon could tell you all about all the details of all of that because you know she's a computer geek yeah. and, but I cannot but I can tell you that it will take you to that site most of the time <laughs> and so I believe that the writer of 1 John is, this is what he's trying to tell us, is that Jesus is the link that leads to God. And love is the link that leads to faith. That's right. If we could just click on it. <laughs> if we could just get linked in with God, that link will lead us to love. And love will challenge our faith. I don't know if you've ever loved, you know that sometimes it's a challenge. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Are you with me? Are you kind of Amen. Amen. Oh, come on now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or, um, love can challenge our faith sometimes, but because we are linked with God, and in God's love, this link can cause us to be victorious. Amen. It's pretty simple. It really sounds simple, and yet it's one of the hardest struggles that many people face. Link, getting linked to God, clicking on that link to God. Yeah. Yeah. Now you all know by now that I am a sports person. And if you no. don't, I'm going to tell you I'm a sports person. And I use sports illustrations because, after all, they're really powerful illustrations. And a lot of times, there's, in Scripture, there's a lot of reference to athletics. So, um, can we play that video? I hope. Oh, there's Ken, if we have a problem with the video. <laughs> it's video time. Oh. Can we get it? It's fine, but it's not. Well, anyways, I used to watch this show. Oh, here we go. It's coming. Patient. But, well, yeah, but it's already, it's the, it, the thunder is stole. <laughs> Well, I'm just Back it up. Yeah. Why will sports? <laughs> He's got to muted on the computer. Okay, here, sound. 
Adding a blow to bring you the constant variety of sports. The thrill of victory. And the agony of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. human drama of athletic <laughs> competition. Now, I I used to watch this show, of course, this what, world, wide world of sports. It predestines, of course, ESPN, yeah. which most yeah. of you were, would really know about ESPN. Some of you are kind of, world of sports, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But this clip, the announcer says, spanning the globe yeah. to bring you the constant variety, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. The thrill of victory. This melodramatic in, uh, introduction became really a national catchphrase. We walked around saying, the thrill of victory. We didn't say that. Because who wants to be defeated? But we were on the, the thrill of victory. While the thrill, thrill of victory had several symbols over decades, they used that clip, the agony of defeat, until the end of wide world of sports. And Victor Bogota, who was the person in that jump with that dreadful crash on March 21st, 1970, was featured from 1970 till the end of the show. He became really a hard luck hero of sorts. And he became an affectionate icon for stunning failure. <laughs> he became famous for this fall. He really did. And he lives today in Yugoslavia. <laughs> An amazing story of this man. I believe there can be victory even in our failures. Yeah. This includes our spiritual failures as well. It includes our spiritual lives. It includes all of us. It includes us using our faith. William, William Hazlitt said this. This is a great quote. Faith is necessary to victory. Faith is necessary to victory. It is then in our faith in God through Christ where victory happens. That's the element of success. Our lives linked in to Christ that leads us to God to exercise our faith that gives us victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe I got to think of how else could I illustrate this? Maybe we can think of faith as an insurance policy. We know that we have it, and we have this policy that covers us in case of damage or in case of an emergency. We, I, I don't know about you, but I hope I never have to use my insurance policy because, you know, that means something happened. But something does happen in life. And when it happens, it's covered. I know that faith is more than just having an insurance policy because we're called on to exercise our faith in very difficult situations. It's, it's easy to have faith when things are going right along the way you want them to go. It's a little bit more difficult to, to use faith when things don't go the way you think they ought to go. Amen? Amen. To have faith is to trust even when things happen that make no sense at all. Sometimes I shake my head. I read a true story about a homeless man who lived in the streets of New York. But really it could be any town. It could be Stockton. 
This homeless man was walking the streets searching for employment. And he ran into one day a well-known businessman. And the businessman offered him a job. The businessman said to him, see that pile of bricks over there? I want you to carry them to the other end of the yard and place them up by the fence. So by nightfall, the homeless man had finished the job of what he was asked to do. And he asked the businessman, perhaps would there be work tomorrow? And the businessman said, yes. Come back tomorrow and I'll give you an, another job. Sure enough, the guy returned very first thing in the morning and the businessman then told him to take the bricks that he placed over the fence and put them back over here where they originally were. So the homeless guy didn't say a word, but he got to work. And he did exactly what he was asked to do. A few days went by, and the homeless man kept moving those bricks. It became evident to the businessman that this is someone who could follow instructions and do what was asked of him, and he gave him a job. Sometimes it's as simple as following instructions. Our instruction manual is right here. That's right. I believe that God wants us to realize that there are some things that we don't understand. Maybe we have some spiritual bricks that we're moving in our lives. And we really don't understand. But we're moving those bricks anyway. Faith is trusting in God when we don't know the, what the outcome will be. When we have to move one pile of spiritual bricks back and forth in our lives, victory is going to happen. Victory will happen if we follow the instructions. If we click on the link, if we get linked in, victory will happen, saints. It yeah, will happen. That's right. Amen. It may not be a cakewalk or the song, I never promised you a rose garden, <laughs> but it's going to be all right. I think of that, man, I never promised you a rose garden. There's a lot of thorns in the rose garden. <laughs> We'd want a rose garden anyway. <laughs> Some people do. It's not me. <laughs> I've a spiritual card that's you know, got my own things in it. <laughs> See, faith has no guarantee that life will make you exempt from problems. And it has no guarantee that there will never be a tragedy. Faith, according to 1 John, is what helps us to overcome whatever problem or crisis we might experience. So we overcome and we live a victor victorious life by using our faith. Yes. We can overcome anything. When we keep on loving the way Christ has called us to love, when we keep on the challenge to love, I'm reminded of the two commandments that Jesus gave, and what are they? Love God and love others. <laughs> See, God wants us to use our faith. And having faith through this kind of love is what happens to us no matter what happens to us. We will overcome whatever problems, whatever crisis that we might experience if we use our faith. I know this, the one who made us knows us. Knows how we are. Knows what we do and don't do. <laughs> God knows how we operate best. God knows what will give us the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. God created each one of us for good. God has a plan for you. Specifically, God has a plan for each 
one of you. When we, need, when we heed God's instruction, we will reap the benefits of, of being and doing the things that we've been created for. Mm -hmm. To live a full life of victory, however, we must be obedient to God. That's right. Getting plugged in. Obedience for the sake of love and love for the sake of obedience is our best opportunity to live a victorious life. So today, my dear saints, I want to encourage you to seek this incredible life by stirring up your faith, by using the faith that God has given you to live a life of victory. The word says Christ is the way, the truth. There's no other truth that can set you free other than this one. I pray, beloved, that we would love one another as Christ has loved us. Amen. Amen.